it's not necessarily the dream destination or bowl game of choice for the Florida football program. Uh, Birmingham, Alabama on January 3rd for the Birmingham Bowl. The Bowl Gators taking on the East Carolina Pirates. Pirates bring in David Waters of Essence to Essence Sports Insider to enlighten us on Florida football. The Gators coming off a 6-5 and five campaign and with a new head coach, of course, uh, headed for 2002. Hey, David, thanks so much for coming. Oh, thanks for having me. All right, so All right, let's start so with the, uh, the, uh, the head coach, uh, not on the sideline for the bowl game, but uh, former Alabama offensive coordinator and Colorado State head coach, McElwain. Just your thoughts on, based on his experience, what he did in Colorado, whether you think this is a good this is a program. Well, uh, first off, we'll say he nailed the press conference that, uh, that he had. Everybody was pretty much impressed with what he had to say, how he carried himself. Um, and he made it known that he likes dogs. He had <laughs> many dog references of saying how uh, he believes uh, he can win a game with his dog playing quarterback. So that lets you know about the confidence and a little bit of swagger that he has. Uh, but yeah, he's gonna he's gonna have to come in. And he's gonna have to change the culture a little bit because under Muschamp, the Gators found a way to lose games. So he's gonna have to instill in these guys that you're not gonna lose, you're gonna win. You know, this past year there was the LSU game where LSU had to convert a third and 25 late in the game. Florida's for defense playing great all, all game long gives up a third and 25 and then drops a wide open touchdown pass from uh, tight end Tevin Westbrook. Driscoll hadn't been playing great, hit Westbrook, drops it, lose the game. South Carolina game comes up late this year, gets a punt block, a field goal block, late in the game. The only possible way they could lose that game, and it happened, but that seemed to be a common theme under Muschamp. So what what Michael Wayne has to do is come in and instill in these guys, give them the confidence that they can pull these close games out. Yeah, David, it was yeah, David, kind of it was interesting if you look back on 2012, which kind of left a sour taste in a lot of Gators fans now. Despite the 11 -week, 11 -week, they don't make it to the SEC championship game. They lose unexpectedly as a big favorite against Louisville. They were finding ways to win that season with uh, basically a running game and a defense and a lack of uh, big plays in the offense. Then over the last couple of years, uh, most of the time, uh, it's, 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 uh, not included in the other game. I know that was another way which they found to lose with a little point late in that game. Against teams on their talent level, not great teams, but it's a good team. South Carolina type of teams, teams. Even the Missouri game was one of the oddest teams that I remember seeing that they gave up like 100 yards of offense. And they got completely destroyed. If you just look the, the final score, it's like, well, Missouri dominated the game, but no. Florida's no, offense or defense actually dominated the game. It could have been a game, but they gave up all sorts of uh, pick sixes and fumble returns and special teams play in that game. So I mentioned the South Carolina game. Carolina game a way to lose, and that's the way it's been for Florida the last two years, uh, six and five this past season. So taking all that into consideration, uh, we see that the recruiting rankings have been over the last couple of years. Uh, not great, but still better than 20, six and five. Uh, Top 15 type of three classes. Uh, it, it, how close do you think Florida is? Not necessarily for a national championship, but we're competing a spot for a spot in the NCAA championship games. Well, let's start with the SEC East in general. Is saying the SEC East is going into next year not really that strong. Georgia is going to be coming in replacing a quarterback and a couple wide wide receiver playmakers. Missouri is going to be Missouri. We counted them out last year. Can we really do that again? Tennessee may be the team that's on the rise. South Carolina's replacing quarterback. So I'm going to sit here and say, you know, the East is probably a little a little equal going into uh, next year. As far as the recruiting rankings and stuff goes, it kind of just seemed that uh, the big-time playmakers that Will Muschamp could bring in were on the defensive side of the ball. And that showed. And of course, he knew defense, but that showed, you know, your Vernon Hargraves, your Dante Fowlers, those guys were the Florida playmakers. Will Muschamp really struggled early on to identify offensive linemen. He was two years in a row where he only brought four in, two years, in, like I said, two years in a row, and it showed big time. 
coaching from offensive line coach Mike Summers this past year really, really helped those guys and only gave up 14 sacks on the year. So that, I mean, that helped, but not being able to identify a quarterback, not being able to get his off wide receiver playmakers. I think there's a little bit more talent at wide receiver than led on, but I think with struggles with offensive line and struggles at quarterback with Driscoll and then most champ for whatever reason wanting to come in and play Alabama style football in the state of Florida, just it didn't work. It wasn't going to work. Florida is at their best when they recruit, when they play three, four wide receivers, spread them out, get the speed on the outside edges and go. Not play in a box and let everybody eight guys in the box just stop what you know is coming was the Will West Champ running game. It wasn't gonna work. He couldn't recruit to it. So I think there is a little bit more talent there, but he's got Michael got to identify a quarterback and a running back playmaker, Demarcus Robinson, and they can start there. Yeah, so you yes, mentioned the offensive skill position. Let's, position. Talk, about let's talk about the talent about the offense. offense. And let's mention Freon Harris, Harris, who pretty much given the given the determined that Jeff Driscoll was not going to live, live up to up his high school nice billing. Uh, Treon Harris throws a completion percentage, of course he struggled uh, in, in that capacity. With 7 picks, not horrible. Uh, he's a rushing threat, ran for 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300 yards. So your evaluation of Harris' performance this year? Uh, I think that what they could have started with, I think they could have ran Treon even more. Uh, yes, he's a little bit on the small side or whatever, but it gave that offense another dynamic. And what what he really struggled with, and I think what the running game would have helped, is some of the passing lanes were in there open. And, and, and Treon's success was either dump it short or a deep bomb. There was no intermediate. He struggled with the 15, 20, 25 yard route. There was no intermediate routes. So I mean, you pretty much knew it was a run game from Florida, short pass, or a bomb. You can game plan for that. Florida State did it. You know, Treon had no success whatsoever. Yes, he hit a couple deep passes, but once they got in the red zone, the offense was shut down. He can't hit an intermediate pass. So if he, if McIlwain can maybe get with him to develop that, because McIlwain is known for coming in, developing quarterbacks, John Parker Wilson, uh, Greg McElroy, Alabama. But what's it really, what it's really going to look like is I really think Treon Harris may be in trouble next year with – Will Greer, who got redshirted this year. I think Will Greer, uh, another true freshman from this past year, I think he's probably going to be Michael Wayne's guy to lead, um, to lead the Gators in Michael Wayne's first year. Hey, David, Kelvin hey, Taylor is a player that in the 2013, even with, even with the lack of playmakers on the outside, the lack of passing threat, threat, loading the box, loading the box against, against him as a, as a freshman was mighty impressive. Was mighty impressive. Against really good defense, really good defense. and he knew, he knew what was coming. Playing for about five or six hundred yards, and a lot of the uh, eight, 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 eight yard games eight, down the stretch. stretch. I expected a little bit more production out of Kelvin Taylor this year. He did have the big game in Buck 97 against Georgia. But pretty much the same here in terms of production as a freshman. Of course, he was nicked up a little bit, I believe, uh, mid-season. Didn't play the ball a lot against Alabama and LSU. Uh, so your thoughts about Kevin uh, Taylor going forward? Uh, came into uh, Gainesville as one of the top recruited running backs in, in uh, the nation. But the, uh, what I think is really going to help him is Michael Wayne's uh, little formation. And Michael Wayne likes to come in and run a little uh, a pistol formation with a lot of zone read. And uh, what Kelvin Taylor has shown success with is is the is is the um, is the, not the zone read. I'm sorry, uh, just the zone running scheme. That's what McElwain were bringing in, and Kelvin Taylor actually excelled in that when Florida would call it. He can find his cutback lanes pretty well. He's got the vision to do that. Um, so I think with uh, I think McElwain's little. I, th I think uh, his scheme will help Kelvin more. Like I said, it won't be the more Press in a box that most champion where there's eight guys in a the box. There are there are going to be three receivers and each back to go along in the backfield with Taylor. And I think that pistol formation really helps his vision where you can cut either way from there. You're not, you're you're running your running lane is not decided on on what the formation is in the pistol. It's pretty much even on each side. The he, the, the zone read is going to be there, and uh, I think I think Taylor will really succeed in that and. 
I really look for Brandon Powell, too, who's another true freshman. A little more speed to the guy, a little tiny guy, a little scat back. But I, I think you're going to see more from him. And uh, Gator fans have been clamoring for Adam Lane as a little Maurice Jones Drew type uh, little bowling ball that you know, you can say he got some little bit of carries late in the year, but I think I think uh, you know Matt Jones is leaving, so uh, that's going to be your three main backs. But I, I think Taylor will excel in Matt Wayne's offense. So yeah, Matt yeah, Jones, Matt Jones, uh, every yard and six yards and six touchdowns. Uh, Kelvin Taylor, Kelvin Taylor back, but uh, yeah, you mentioned Adam Lane, somebody that we've heard a lot about uh, prior to prior to spring practice and got to see him uh, in the spring game. The ball. Uh, now I want to get to the playmakers on offense, or what are supposed to be the playmakers. You alluded to Demarcus Robertson, who is by far the most productive guy on the outside with 47 catches and seven touchdowns. Then it really drops off in productivity with Quentin Dunbar's touchdowns. So, the chicken before the egg. Is it the quarterback lack of quarterback play that can't get the ball in the playmaker's hands in space, uh, in the right spots, or are these guys just a bit overrated and haven't been developed possibly once they've uh, come into the program? I think it really starts with the coaching staff and Florida not really having a dedicated wide receivers coach. Um, right before the season started last year, a former Kentucky coach, and he was a Florida wide receiver coach, Joker Phillips, was dismissed from the Florida program. So former Gator National Championship quarterback, Chris Leak, is the wide receivers coach. He never done it before. He was a grad assistant the year before in uh, 2013. So, you know, you have a guy who's never coached receivers leading these guys. And Demarcus Robinson, you could tell his talent was enough to get to get by that. Um, Amal Fullwood, who's going to be with Quentin Dunbar leading, Amal Fullwood's probably going to be the number two guy. He's from right here from, from right here in Jacksonville. Tall, lanky, should be a really good red zone type receiver, but they didn't throw it to him in the red zone. Uh, and I, to get back to your point, I, the wide receiver coach is, is where I think starts that. But, yes, the quarterback play with Jeff Driscoll, the majority of the year was the major problem. Driscoll come in highly touted and for whatever reason could not get it done. And I think part of that, I'll go back to coaching in that he had three offensive coordinators the whole time he was here. Weiss's offense was not suited for him. The Brent Pease offense was not suited for him. If Kurt Roper would have maybe come in earlier in Jeff Driscoll's career, assume he could have assumed what he ran more of in high school. And I think that would have been a little bit more of a success. But whatever the reason was, Driscoll just did not have it between the ears, as they say, when he got on the field. Everybody said, oh, go see him in practice. He, he's exactly what Florida needs. And it comes to Saturdays, and it was not there. So I, I, I do think the playmaker's there, but, yeah, Jeff Driscoll drugged that offense down. And while Treon did come in and offense did look a little bit better, it wasn't enough to take the next step. So I'm not going to say it was all Driscoll, but it did start with him. See, but I've argued that while it was easy to tab Alabama as the best defense in the country in 2012 after winning the national championship, that the Gators might have had the best defense in college football. Considering the offense scored by 20 points per game, a lot of three and out, a lot of close games, and the schedule was brutal. The SEC East was much better than they held Aaron Murray and Georgia down to nothing, even though they lost that game. They dominated the game. They, they, they crushed an 11 win South Carolina team on defense. They, they shut down Johnny Mansell. They shut down LSU. They won at Tallahassee for the state against a, an explosive for the state offense. This Gator defense was serious. I thought it was the best in the country. The last two years, it's difficult to judge. Such a bad position by the offense. Consistently, really didn't have a bad game. Maybe the Alabama game, uh, uh, again, uh, the offense didn't do a whole lot. They gave up about uh, 640 yards in that game. So just moving forward, uh, how good can the Gators be on defense uh, in 15? Well, the uh, McElwain made his first big hire yesterday. Uh, with uh, Mississippi State defensive coordinator coming over and uh, defensive coordinator out Florida, Jeff Collins. 
he comes in and runs a, a more 4-3 style defense, a little bit different than what Muschamp ran with this Gator defense. Uh, it's not going to be so much of a – you're not going to have that buck position that um, that Muschamp really liked. Or, you know, you could rove around, you could get on the edge, you could line up over center, but the guy was going to stand up. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if Collins brings that in because if re recruits have already said – that a lot of the high profile recruits is a that's the position they want to play at Florida. It remains to be seen if that position is even going to be there. So, uh, but Collins is going to be walking into arguably the best secondary in the country. You go have Vernon Hargraves, you got Brian Poole, you got true freshman Jalen Tabor, and I mean, like I said, arguably the best secondary in the country. Hargraves, he's lock, he's going to lock up one side of the field, but. Um, Antonio Morrison, from all accounts, it looks like he's probably going to come back. He, everybody thought he was probably going to try and test the waters in the NFL, but it looks like he's probably going to come back now. So, but, but Dante Fowler was a big playmaker, and he's going pro. He will leave early. But Alex McAllister and Brian College Jr. really came on and, and started help pressure the quarterbacks as well. So I think the situation is, for next year is it, going to be really, really good, but like I said, with the changing of the scheme, with the recruiting still be there to keep that up, Florida's always going to have DBs. That's not the problem. What's going to happen with the defensive line and linebacker position would be would be my question. Right, David. Let's hey, talk David, about let's the whole game because, game because uh, uh, me being a me sick college football, football fan, I'll be watching. Well, I understand, I understand that uh, these kind of games, whole games get made fun of. Birmingham. Why are we playing the bowl game in Birmingham? Birmingham Bowl. That's a joke. That's a joke. East Carolina, Florida. Florida. The whole deal. The whole deal. But I'll be watching. I'll be watching. Again, again. Love to catch uh, at least the brand name uh, football uh, programs, even on Dax play. Even play. So, so there's not going to be a whole lot of vibe in the stadium. stadium. You've got a Florida got team. Florida team. Usually, uh, both teams are supposed to be you're, you're going to a more attractive, more attractive place, place, vacation and, and then prepare for the game. Uh, the game Florida, it's going to Birmingham from Gainesville. Uh, Short trip, short trip, whole game, whole game. Uh, not a lot of vibe, not a lot of bus in this East Carolina is Carolina's pretty good. Is pretty good. Uh, how, how do you expect the Gators to come out in this one? I know this is a complete guess or speculation uh, of how the Gators are going to move on and, and, um, and if they're going to put up a fight in this one. Uh, I guess I'll start with, uh, but it is a bowl game. We didn't get one last year. They didn't, Gators didn't get one last year. So, yes, uh but, yeah, you're Florida, it's East Carolina, and ironically enough, Florida plays East Carolina the second game of the season next year. So, um, but, yeah, the preparation, it's, it is going to be weird. Like I said, I brought up Jeff Collins being uh, brought in as defensive coordinator for McIlwain next year, which really leads us that DJ Durkin is not going to be retained as uh, – as the defensive coordinator for Florida next year, but he is the interim coach for the bowl game. So where is his head at? Uh, rumors that he's gotten offers from Texas A&M and North Carolina, so it's his head there looking for that. Um, a lot of other, Travaris Robinson, the main recruiter for South Florida for Florida, it's looking like he might follow Muschamp to Auburn, and he'll be here, uh, or he could stay at Florida. Um, Hearing conflicting reports on that, so there's another coach who, you know, what's he going to be doing? Um, everybody else on the coaching staff is probably going to be, definitely be looking for other jobs. So, I, yeah, their head's not going to be completely in this game. Um, the players, like I said, to be interesting to see how they respond. There was no bowl game last year. Is there any hunger to, you know, respond to that? Um, this would be a good chance for Treon Harris to show one more time if he can can be the, the quarterback for Michael Wayne. Like I said, I think it's going to be Will Greer. There's going to be three weeks of bowl practice to figure that out. Um, but, of course, we know Harris is going to play the game. Greer is going to be redshirted. So this is one more time for Will Greer to show that, uh, that he, can be, he can be the guy. Uh, defense, it's... East Carolina's got a pretty good offense. You know, uh, Shane Carden, their, uh, their quarterback, uh, pretty good guy. The um, early Heisman favorite when they were you know, playing South Carolina tough, beat Virginia Tech. Um, but uh, that, uh, <laughs> I really don't see Florida just showing up for this game. I just think there's too much, too many distractions going on. 
East Carolina's going to be up. They're playing the big time SEC program, and I I hate to say Florida won't show up just because you, you sit there and say they probably want to play for pride, but I, it's, it's going to mean more to East Carolina than it does to Florida. Yeah, I don't think there's yeah, any think question there's any about that. that uh, uh, everybody, everybody plays, everybody plays in the these days because there's so many going, going on, but you're not playing with uh, four or five, four other, four or five other games. Other this is a rare, is a rare opportunity for East Carolina, East Carolina to be playing. playing. And if anybody if wants anybody to be watching college football on Saturday, they're going to be watching East Carolina play Florida. And again, an SEC game, and despite the Pirates' success against some big boys in uh, North Carolina and Virginia Carolina, Tech this year, this year uh, they lost uh, by 10 against South Carolina. South Carolina. Carolina. Group, they can knock out the back SEC back in this one. You mentioned, mentioned Green Green Park. Park. Uh, nothing uh, to see at 28, 28 touchdown. They already won the, the, the best in the business to the wide receiver. receiver. It's going to be really good to see him and, uh, him and Vernon Hargrave matched up. Yeah, it should be a great matchup for the secondary. Yeah, I think so. It's a... Like I said, they, if Florida defense comes to play, East Carolina the offense will definitely come to play. That be, that's going to be a fun little chess match to watch. We're joined by uh, David Wayne, uh, SEC Insider. Uh, we have time, uh, David, uh, David uh, Insider for the football. football. Hey, thanks for having me, man.